Welcome! This is the second of two videos on saving data to text files. My name's Andy Wicks and in this video you'll see how to read the data from a text file. There are two ways of storing the data and we saw that in the previous video. You can either save it all on one line or having each item of data on separate lines. So let's now have a look at this in action. This was the first program in the first video and it asks you to enter your name. So my name is Andy Wicks and it asks for your age, 23, and it asks for my height. Now I'm going to tell it to leave the name blank and that will stop the program. And here we have the output from that. It's got Andy Wicks, age 23, and my height is 1.21. But now what I'd like to do is to read in that data. So now I'm going to go to my second program. This program reads in the data. Let me show you that working. As you can see, down the bottom here, it's worked out that the text is Andy Wicks 23 1.21. It looks as if all it's done is read the whole line, but as you'll see when we get into the program, it's actually been a little cleverer than that. So let's go back to the program. First of all, I need my inputs. I need a buffered reader input and I need a file reader. Buffered reader is just where the data is stored temporarily. The file reader is the thing that actually goes and connects to that file that we created. And as usual in handling files, we need the I.O. exception. So here is the code. What I'm going to do in main is first of all create the variables I need. In the previous program everything was stored as a string because text files only save strings. I'm going to set the name to be blank, but now I'm going to have the integer age and double height. And I'm going to set all those up to be empty to start with. Now we come to the try catch. When handling files, always use try catch. So we're going to create a buffered reader called BR, and that's going to be a new buffered reader that's going to read in the file that it finds at nameageheight.txt. I'm then going to create a string called line and the content of that will be null. Now we come into the loop. We don't know how many names, ages and heights have been entered by the user so we need a while loop to be able to go through as many as we need. And whilst line is not null then we want to read in the next line. So the line of text is read into the variable called line. And as long as that is not null, we keep going. So the first item of data was read in and that has now been put into a string array called temp. Temp is just an array of lots of different strings and it's created from line by using the tab character as the delimiter. So every time it meets a tab character it creates a new temp. Now we're going to use the first item in temp, the zeroth item, and put that in name. Next we're going to get the second item of data which is number one and put that into age after we've turned it into an integer using parse int. Next we're going to get the third item of data remember arrays always start at zero. We're going to get the third item of data read that in, turn it into a double and put its value into height. And finally to show that we've actually got these in and it's worked, we're just going to output them to the system.out 
and we're going to separate those with the tab characters again. Now you could say, well, that's a bit of a waste. We've read it in, got rid of the tab characters, and now we're putting it out again with tab characters in. What we've done is we've read in that r row of data, changed all its formats, and this system out.println could actually be some code that does some awfully complicated things, the sort of complicated things that you would want to be able to do. So here we have a program that reads in a whole line of data, turns it into the correct types, and outputs it. But what happens if the programmer has decided to have each item of data on a separate line? How does that change our program? And for that, first of all, we need to create our data. So this is the second program that we looked at. And in this program, the data is all saved on separate lines. Let's make this run. And it asks for my name. My name is still Andy Wicks. I'm still only 23 years old. My height is 1.31 and the person sitting next to me watching the video of course is the Queen. She usually sits on my right hand side and tries to take in everything we do. Uh, she's 83 and she is 1.85 metres tall which means if I get it wrong she tends to beat me up. Okay, now we'll close down the program and see what's in name, age, height. We've got all the data with the text in proper case. On a, All the data is on a separate line. So now let's go to the second version of our reading in program. Here is the program that reads in the data. First of all we need our imports and those are the same as before. We need an buffered reader, a file reader and an I.O. exception. Now we need each variable set up. So string name is going to be blank, integer age is going to be zero and height will be a double which has 0.0 in it. Now we're going to read in the data in a try catch. When using files, I don't know if I mentioned this, but when using files, always use try catch. So we're going to have a buffered reader, BR, that will create a new file reader from the file it finds at name age height dot txt. Now comes the clever bit. We create a loop which will keep going round all the time that name is not empty. So if name is empty, the loop will stop. So it reads in name from the BR and it reads in one line and one line only. Because remember the data is now stored with each item on a separate line. Now we can read in age. BR.readLine gets transformed into an integer by integer.parseInt. And the height goes in, being converted to a double, by double dot pars double. Having done that, all I'm going to do is output the data again in separate lines using a tab character for name, age and height, so we can see what's happened. Now let's see that happening. And down the bottom here, as you can see, it's read in all three records, even though each record has data on a separate line, it comes out in the format we want. And again, whilst this program has system.out.println, you could actually do whatever it is you wanted to do, not just output it. I hope that has helped.